Hi, hello, welcome to Argumenta podcast, the podcast stage to deliberate, discuss and debate on various contemporary social, legal and political issues. Today, we have come up with an explainer video on retrospective taxes. Here in this session, I'll be looking into what are these retrospective taxes, what made them so controversial and what situations caused an amendment in this law or the tax. I'd like to explain what is a retrospective tax. It is nothing but a combination of two words, retrospective and tax. So retrospective means something in the past. So as per these taxes, even if a transaction has happened in the past or a deal has happened in the past, it could still be taxed in the current law. For example, if I run a company and I'm following the tax laws in India, and I'm paying my regular taxes. So if there is an amendment in the law, even in 2021, I can still be taxed for a deal or a transaction that I completed back in 2016. So this is levying retrospective taxes on a particular deal or a transaction. Now, the Taxation Law Amendment Act of 2021. Now here, Lok Sabha passed the bill to scrap the controversial retrospective tax that was introduced back in March 2012. Now let's explore what was the reason the retrospective taxes were introduced back in 2012. So we need to go back to the year 2009, where Hutchinson Vampoa was a company that was operating in India and it decided to exit India for various reasons. And Vodafone was a conglomerate, an MNC, which was looking forward to diversify its holdings in India. So Vodafone brought 67% of shares in Hutchinson company for $1 billion. So this deal or purchasing of the shares was structured in such a manner that it took place between two foreign companies in Hong Kong. And the IT department demanded 7,990 crores as a capital gains from this transaction. So what is I use the term capital gain here. So what is this term ca capital gain? So in case I bought gold bar or something back in uh, 2016, and that costed me around uh, 10,000 rupees, for example. Now in 2021, if its value has increased up to 30,000, now this increase of 20,000 rupees is a capital gain and that can be taxed by the income tax department. Now in this particular case, the income tax department demanded a tax in this particular deal stating that just because it was performed in Hong Kong, this led to evasion of taxes as Hong Kong is considered as a tax haven, but this would not be an excuse for Vodafone to escape the capital gains tax. Now, Vodafone did not budge and they went to the Bombay High Court because their interpretation of section nine of the Income Tax Act varied compared to the IT tax authority. Now, why is section nine important? Because any such deals or transactions performed outside India come under the ambit of section nine of the Income Tax Act because it deals with the income of the non-resident Indians. Now, Vodafone contended that they were not liable to pay any taxes because as per section nine of the Income Tax Act, the provision was not drafted in a manner or it was not broad enough to bring in those transactions that have not happened in Indian territory. Here, the transaction took place in Hong Kong, so they did not have to pay much taxes because Hong Kong is considered as a tax seven. And since this was between two foreign companies, Indian law will not be applicable in a foreign territory. Now, this was not something Bombay High Court agreed on and uh, Vodafone company lost the case. They made an appeal to the Supreme Court of India and the Supreme Court took a similar interpretation of Section 9 of the IT Act. And they said that Vodafone need not pay any taxes because the Indian law was not drafted broad enough to include this particular transaction. Now, the government did not take this thing lightly. And during 2012, the, the finance minister of our country was uh, Sri Pranab Mukherjee. And he had a particular mindset that sovereign is supreme and, and he did not tolerate that this particular company evaded taxes. So what he did was he brought an amendment in section nine of the Income Tax Act. He amended in the, um, the amendment was made in such a way that even if 
the, the transaction or deals are happening in a foreign country, if the value of the assets derived from this deal is still located in India, then this particular transaction could still be taxed. So taking example from the Vodafone case, even if the deal was structured in Hong Kong, since where assets, their assets were all located in India, this uh, deal or, or the, this deal could still give to capital gain and this could be taxed by the income tax department. Now, this principle was in fact good, but the main problem was that the amendment was made in a retrospective sense, as in after 1962, from 1962 to uh, 2012, whatever such deals have, take, have taken place outside the Indian territory by non-resident Indians, even such deal could be taxed. So this was a retrospective tax demand that was being made. Now, this was not a welcome move uh, from many of the people or, or from the investors because tax certainty is something that uh, an investor looks into before um, uh, uh, commencing his operations in that particular country. Further, two main problematic points in this amendment was that the legislature did not pay heed to the argument or, or any decisions given by the apex court of the country because Supreme Court had clearly opined that Vodafone need not pay the tax, but under the, this particular new amendment, it had to pay the tax because even the memorandum to explain the provisions of the bill had this to say. Certain judicial pronouncements have created doubts about the scope and sections and scope and purpose of section 9 and 195 of the Income Tax Act. And further, this amendment is being made in order to bring a clarification in this aspect. Now, this particular explanation completely disregards the ju judgment of the apex court of the country. Secondly, a committee headed by another eminent uh, person, Mr. Damodaran, uh, on this particular amendment said that it has often been said that death and taxes are equally undesirable aspects of human life. Yet it can be said in favor of death that it is never retrospective. Retrospective taxation has the undesirable effect of creating major uncertainties in the business environment and constituting a significant disincentive for persons wishing to do business in India. While the legal powers of a government extend to giving retrospective effect to taxation proposals, it might not pass the test of certainty and continuity. This is a major area where improvements should be attempted sooner rather than later. Now, Vodafone, after this, realized that uh, the government is not going to change its stance, and it invoked the bilateral investment treaty between India and Netherlands, which was signed back in 1995. What does a bilateral investment treaty mean? It means that two countries form an agreement or, or a treaty that the companies in their particular territories or jurisdiction will be given a fair and equal treatment. Now, Vodafone invoked a bilateral investment treaty between India and Netherlands, but how is that possible? Because Vodafone is a UK-based company, but it, it, it was a very smart move from them. And they said that since Vodafone also has a Dutch unit that bought the shares of an Indian firm, so this, this is made as a transaction between a Dutch and an India, Indian company. So this case went to the permanent court of arbitration. And recently the court ruled that India has to reimburse 40.3 crores to Vodafone. Uh, and it, it has agreed to the fact that uh, because the amendment or the, in 2012 on the retrospective taxes was in fact a way of India dishonoring the bilateral investment treaty between India and Netherlands. Moving on to the second case I wanted to discuss is the Kane arbitration case. Now, this issue began again uh, between uh, 2006 to 2007, and Kane India uh, were a total of nine subsidiaries or nine companies in India, and its parent company is located in UK. Now, in 2006, what the parent company did was they created kind of like a shelf, shell company that is Cairn India Holdings Limited, which was incorporated in New Jersey. And they transferred the shares of all these nine subsidiary companies located in India to Cairn India Holdings Limited. And after the initial public offering of, offering of Cairn India was completed, the shares were all transferred back from Cairn India Holdings Limited to Cairn India Limited. Now, because of all, of, all the movement of uh, shares between these companies, there had been a capital gains increase of 24,000 crores. 
Now, the income tax department took note of this particular transaction and it did not let it go. So, and again, we had in 2012, the amendment brought and the retrospective taxes were, in, uh, were introduced. So this case was again picked up by the income tax department. The case was first fought in the uh, income tax appellate tribunal, but Kane India lost. And it again invoked the bilateral investment treaty between India and UK, because here Kane India Limited was a UK based company. And they said that India was again dishonoring the bilateral investment treaty between India and UK by not giving equal opportunities to uh, Kane India Limited. Now, this case again, before moving on to the verdict of this case, I, this is there's a quote that comes to my mind by Jean Bob Baptist Colbert. He says that art of taxation consists of so plucking the goose as to obtain the largest amount of feathers with the smallest amount of hissing. What does this mean? That the taxation or the tax should be devised in such a way that it gives the government more revenue than losses, right? But this is not the case with Indian government because they intro, it introduced retrospective taxes in order to cover all the deals performed before 2012. But what happened in the end, that is coming back to the Cairn uh, India Holdings case, and as I said, the bilateral investment treaty was invoked, and this case went to the permanent uh, court of arbitration. And this court also has held that this is not an internal tax dispute of India, uh, but it actually falls under the breach of fair treatment under UK-India Bilateral Investment Treaty. It ruled against the Indian government and has asked the government to pay 8,842 crores as a compensation. Now, these two cases were the primary reasons why recently the Lok Sabha passed the Taxation Law Amendment Act of 2021. And the government has clarified that from now on, no retrospective demand will be made for any issues settled before 28th May 2012. The explanatory memorandum of this act states that it is, it is enacted to ensure tax certainty, to prevent damage, prevent dram damage of reputation for India, and for attracting investors, because this is um, COVID during the pandemic times, uh, we suffered a lot of uh, economic losses. And we need more investors to invest in India. So it's better if there is tax certainty in the country. And also this tax became a sore point for investors. The government has also agreed to settle ongoing disputes and pay refunds to the companies that were penalized under the controversial law. Now, food for thought, what I think about the entire issue is, uh, back in 2012, when this amendment was brought in by uh, Shri Pranam Mukherjee, NDA government being in the opposition op uh, vehemently opposed this move. But the same government has taken seven years to amend this, rest this particular law. And many of the platforms suggest that it, it is because they didn't want to ruin their public image uh, as the government has been accused of siding with conglomerates or MNCs. Seems that the government has been unnecessarily shy to like, make, make this particular amendment. And um, another thing is, even though the company's interpretation of Section 9 of the Income Tax Act seems to be correct, but it certainly seems so that the companies have utilized the loopholes in this law to avoid paying the capital gains taxes. Because in case our laws were drafted in a way to, to be broad enough to attract all these particular deals or transactions, then the companies would have had to pay the capital gains tax. So that will be the conclusion of, of this particular session. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to the podcast. This current episode, the full length, will be available on YouTube. And also you will be able to find the latest updates about the session as well on Instagram and other platforms as well. So do like, share and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And also follow our Instagram page with regard to regular updates as well.